Hey there, I'm Sandra. Today I'm gonna do an illustration for my podcast. I have a podcast with my best friend. I would share it, but it's only in Spanish. But if you speak Spanish, the link will be in the description. I first did a series of sketches to bounce ideas with my friend who does the podcast with me. And we decided on this idea of doing like a, an illustration of a flat lay. <laughs> as if we were having coffee and a piece of cake with our cats on the table because that's like the feel we want to go for in the podcast. I'm using this Color Eno Pilot mechanical pencil. Um, I, I'm gonna live I'm gonna leave everything in the description, like all the materials, the paper I used and everything. And here I'm using my cell phone to <laughs> do like a mark to leave that space blank because that's where the podcast logo is gonna be and this idea of the coffee was a really good like, way of expressing for us that we want the podcast to feel like you're having coffee with some friends so, and I really wanted to have a delicate feel like not a very lined sensation or not a realistic one either uh, the the image you saw at the very beginning of the video was the illustration for the first season of the podcast. So I really like that style and I want to recreate it for this one. The first thing I do is do a very light sketch. This paper I really like but it's very textured and I find that if I press too hard, the sketch is impossible to erase if you make a mistake. So I try to have a really light hand when I'm doing all the things. Here I'm drawing a teacup. I ended up using just a couple of brushes but I took out these selection of brushes to have them at hand. The biggest one is a number nine and the smallest one is a three slash zero or three zeros, I don't know. Um, but I find it really tricky with brushes. This one is a Winsor & Newton and I also have a Da Vinci brush and the smallest one is a brand called Interlon, Interlon <laughs> that I bought in Japan. But the thing with brushes I find that is that even with within the same brand, sometimes I buy a brush and this next time I buy the brush, it's the same number but it's not the same size or shape as the previous one so sometimes i'll buy a number two and when i need to replace it i it feels completely different so i usually go for like the look of it and the feel in the store when i go and buy one i, I think about what i need and and then i just choose it if I see that I like the shape. I like it to taper quite a lot and have a very pointy tip if it's a round brush. But with this style of illustration, what I really like to do is leave some spaces white, as you can see here, because I, I love to give the feel of this, for example, is uh, like a ceramic or porcelain plate. So I like to make it look as if the light is hitting it. But in this style of illustration, mainly I, I use a bit of reference. Here I'm looking for uh, a picture of the cat of my friend. Um, her name is Tres, which means three. And I don't know her by heart. I, I can pretty much draw my cat, Melocoton, which is in the top corner. Uh, he's Lay, laying over there, but this I need a bit of reference. And for this type of style of drawing, even though I use a bit of reference, I pretty much change all the colors and the composition as I want them to look. I, I don't really like copying the things just as I, I see them.
after laying down the first layer and painting like putting the color over everything i'm using this number two brush by da vinci uh, it's a synthetic brush and i try to water down the color a lot so you can see the layer that's below it i i'm pretty much of the mindset that if you put a bunch of effort and texture and nice um, variants from gradients that's the word i'm looking for gradients between one color and another you want them to to shine through so i try to water down the layers i use on top for shadows and for more colors and in this case textures of the fabric because i i want i want you to be able to see the layer below so it's actually a very quick way of painting because you only have to go over the parts that you want to be different but you have you want to make sure that you really can see the layer below so i usually just go over it two or three times over and with some other illustrations that I want, in it, I want them to look more realistic, for example botanical illustrations, I end up going over quite a few times and it's the part that it's most, I don't know, it takes the longest. And I usually, in the end, end up looking at it and thinking, oh, maybe I should have stopped sooner because I like the look of an illustration when it's more simple and you can feel a little bit of the improvisation and I don't know I if, if it's if you work on it too much sometimes you can ruin the sensation that um, more spontaneous illustration can give I don't know if that makes sense but even with the second layer I try to keep a few of the spaces completely blank because I want to have a pure reflection and the paper to shine through. The paper is pretty much the white in my illustrations. I, I never use white on top ex except a few lines when I'm doing watercolors. I, I feel like that, I don't know, I'm not so used to mixing, for example, white wash. Maybe I should start doing it for some illustrations, but yeah, I'm, do I'm doing um, food is probably my favorite part. I like a lot when an you can see the sketch of an illustration or some parts are unfinished. Usually in museums they're the ones, the those paintings are the ones that captivate me the most. And I was thinking about this because for example here I drew a floral pattern to make it look like a, like China, like a porcelain plate. And for me it's really interesting that it didn't really look like a plate. It was just a circle with some stains and different watercolor gradients. And just by adding the pattern, you can immediately tell it's a flowered plate. So I, I'm not especially good at it, but I really like that with illustration you can sort of push the boundary of unrealistic and realistic and taking things out of an illustration and you can still get the message across and I think it's really interesting how much you can stretch it and make something very different to what it looks in real life and you're mind and your eyes will still recognize it as that thing. I don't do very abstract things or conceptual things, but I really like when I see something interesting. For the lining of this illustration, I just did watercolor, but less diluted. So I just take the same color, but add a little less water 
but make sure it's like runny enough so it coats the whole length of the brush and it can like slide without becoming dry and scratchy so you just have to find the balance you can pretty much tell from the palette when it's in the, and when you're mixing it in the palette how can how you can slide it and if it runs well it you don't need any more water because at the less water it has the more concentrated the pigment is and the more you can make a good definition and you will have less transparency in the paint so with that i'm gonna line everything and as you can see i don't line the like the whole way around each of the shapes i try to skip a few places and vary the line to give the things a little volume and personality i used to do a lot of lining before when i was like in high school and stuff i didn't really color my illustrations so i just had to make do with the lines and lining i that much i learned that with just how you place the line and how thick or thin you can you do it you can tell when something is on top of something else or how far or close it is in the perspective of your illustration i talk a little more about lining in my in this month's patreon tutorial in my Patreon, I, for, for one of the tiers, I have tutorial videos and I do pretty much the topics you guys choose. So if you're, ever, if you're interested in some more in-depth videos about illustration, you can find them there. They're going to be in the description box as well. And in the lowest tier, I usually share comics and wallpapers and I have a newsletter. So yeah. And it's the best way to support support my work. And right now I'm very into doing graphic novel. I have to do two pages a day. So that's been <laughs> very time consuming. But I I really enjoy the work. So if, if you want to support me, thank you very much. And the link will be in the description. But yes, this month's video is actually about lining with watercolor and the tiny details, which not was a requested topic from the previous month. Um, my kind of lining, my per my perfect lines are not very straight. I never use a ruler and they're usually like wavy and as you can see here, but I really like doing a little bit longer strokes. So I just lay the brush and try to do as long as a line as my wrist and the paint will allow. And then I just go back and see if anything needs, needs a bit more color or to be a little darker. I do it very, very lightly. I barely touch the paper with the brush just so I don't like scrape off. Because if, if you um, rub it too much, you start lifting the layers below. So I just do it really softly. And here is where I don't want to go overboard. I don't want to make it too, I don't know, too contrasty or too realistic. So I just go around and see what's missing. And that's about it. Then the illustration, it's pretty much done at this point. I then scan it and I will add the things for the podcast on top. Thank you very much for watch watching and I will be back with another video soon.